everybody, it is the end of 2017. We survived somehow, and uh, it's a good time for everybody to look back at the year that was and see how they you know, did toward their goals and whatnot. And it's especially easy and actually kind of hard not to do when you have a YouTube channel and you've got actual numbers that you can look at. So that's what I've been doing a lot of lately, and I wanted to share some of that with you, especially the top five videos of 2017. Now, I'm not going to actually play the videos here for you. Obviously, they are already on YouTube for you to see. So as each one of these comes up, if you look up in this here corner here, I'll put a little card that you can link to and uh, watch it yourself if you haven't seen it or if you just want to watch it again because you're bored. Uh, but I also have a link down in the description to a blog post that I did on Steemit. I talked about Steemit in my blockchain video. It's a decentralized blockchain-based uh, platform that is really interesting and there's a lot of good people on there and I'm, I'm giving it a go. I'm going to see how it works. So there's a link down there. I invite you to check it out and check out Steam it while you're at it. And one thing I do want to point out is that just because a video did better than other videos, say on my channel or anybody else's channel for that matter, it's not necessarily a reflection of that video being better than any other video. Um, it has a lot to do with the algorithm and what Google and YouTube picks up on and decides to share with other people for whatever reason. So really it's more of an indication of what YouTube thinks is important or noteworthy on my channel than anything. But before I get to the videos, I wanna just talk really quickly about numbers, like the way the channel has grown this last year. It's amazing to me, and I know a lot of the old school people that have been following this channel have been amazed by the growth this last year. And really seeing it in cold hard numbers is kind of humbling, <laughs> so I thought I would share that with you uh, real quick. Okay, so I started out the year at about 19,000 subscribers, and it looks like I'm going to end it at about 85,000. Um, to put that in perspective, my goal for the end of the year was 50,000, and I hit that in August, which is why that was a big deal for me when I hit it back then. What's also interesting about that is I looked back through 2014. So 19,000 doubled is 38,000, double that again is 76,000. So it's a little bit over two doublings in size. And I looked back through 2014 when I first started really getting serious about the channel and it's followed that trend this whole time, r remarkably, uh, somewhere between two and three doublings every year. It'll be interesting to see if this continues through 2018 because if so, that's, there, it could be a really big year. It's, it's exciting to think about. I also wanted to point out that the number of views has followed the same trajectory that I can tell. We started the year with uh, 1.3 million views. I had just hit a million before the end of last year. And right now we're sitting at about 6.7 million views. Um, these are still small potatoes in YouTube land. There are, some, there are some channels that get that many views on every single video. I am nowhere near that, and they are not on the same planet as me. But that's okay. I like what I got. I'll take it. So I don't know if I'm annoying when I do this or not, but I just want to say thank you again for all the support over this last year and if you're new here by the way if you are one of these newer people that have just shown up in uh, recent months uh, say hi down in the comments get to know people there's people who've been here a long time there's a lot of really interesting people that watch this channel and comment on it and um, you might make some new friends all right enough with the weepy stuff here are the top five videos in 2017 on answers with joe Number five, with 183,523 views, five reasons going to Mars is a terrible idea. So this video was sort of a case of, I thought that I had a clever headline and it turns out that maybe it bit me in the butt just a little bit. So one thing I have learned in my YouTubing days is that being controversial can get you a lot of views. And there's a lot of YouTubers that really lean into that with controversial pranks, with saying edgy stuff, edgy stuff to get views. I'm generally not the type of person that tries to do that, but this video kind of went down that road a little bit. You know, with all the talk about SpaceX and NASA going to the moon uh, and, and going to Mars, I, I felt like there was just a lot of gung-ho-ness going on, and I'm definitely part of that. I've, I've done a whole lot of pro going to Mars videos, I felt, but there's also a lot of challenges ahead and a lot of things that we have not quite mastered yet. A lot of issues that we haven't found solutions to just yet. So I wanted to talk about those because those are important and it kind of gives you a flip side view of the whole thing. What did wind up happening is I think YouTube wound up sharing this in suggested videos to a lot of people who don't really know my channel and don't know that I've done a lot of yay yay or let's go to Mars videos. So I got a whole lot of really angry comments from people that were calling me 
all kinds of wonderful names, uh, telling me I was a downer. And if it was up to me, we never would have gone into outer space at all, and we wouldn't have phones and rah, 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 rah. And of course, I'm just sitting there like, have you seen any of my other videos? And the truth is, no, they hadn't, because it just had shown up in their feed somewhere. And it proved to be so polarizing that I decided to do a video later that week that was, you know, five reasons why going to Mars is an awesome idea. And, um, it did not get seen nearly as much as this one, but it was a nice counterpoint, I felt. And this was also the video that had counterpoint Joe at the end. I really felt like I was trying to soften it as much as possible, but I think just the fact that I used a title that said it was a terrible idea got me a lot of hate comments, but what can you do? Number four, with 241,489 views, NASA versus SpaceX, who will get to Mars first? Starting to see a pattern here. You seen a pattern here? So this was actually the video that kind of inspired the previous video because this one did really well and um, it really kind of, I started to notice that there's a, there's a couple of different camps. There's Team NASA and there's Team SpaceX and I might play off of that a little bit in the coming year. Hint, hint. But it's an interesting dynamic because you got SpaceX which are just really gung-ho, let's get there as soon as possible. And then there's NASA that is, you know, it's the turtle in the hair thing. They are just definitely taking their time. I will say though, the more I think about it, the more I, I kind of agree with NASA's approach of starting around the moon and getting you know, the, the technology down and understanding how that deep space outside the magnetosphere environment affects astronauts and affects equipment and everything and kind of perfecting things on the moon before they take it to Mars because when you're at the moon, you can get home in you know, a couple of days, whereas with Mars, you're just, you're there. And if you have a problem, well, you're there. I will say I do wish that NASA's plan was shorter and wasn't gonna take 30 years to get there. Uh, SpaceX is definitely more exciting. NASA's is definitely more practical. Um, and, and we'll see, they'll probably wind up working together in some way, but anyway. The third most popular video with 304,743 views. Why is Elon Musk digging tunnels under Los Angeles? Can't lose with Elon Musk, I'm telling you. So this one is obviously about his launch of The Boring Company where he is testing out digging tunnels uh, under I think it's like a six mile stretch under Los Angeles. And in the, in the time since this video came out, there have been talks about him doing one from Baltimore to DC. I think there was one from New York to Philadelphia that they've been talking about. And he also revealed how this is gonna work. Uh, it's not just gonna be tunnels that cars are driving through, but it's actually cars on sleds that are going on predetermined paths. It's all very interesting. Ironically, I think the thing that Elon seems to be most excited about is that he sold a whole lot of boring company hats. He keeps bragging about how many hats he sold. In fact, he's calling himself a hat salesman at this point. There will very likely be more videos about this in the future. Second most popular video with 413,720 views, Moore's Law is ending. Here's seven technologies that could bring it back to life. So I have a tendency to sometimes stumble into controversial topics or topics that polarize people. I didn't really think that the ending of Moore's Law was that uh, controversial of a topic, but I think there's, there's people out there that get really passionate about these ideas and they definitely showed up with this video. And not so much that I got a lot of hate comments on this one, they weren't angry so much, but there's, there's definitely very strong opinions on what's happening with Moore's Law, whether it's a law at all, whether it you know, should be called a law, whether it's been dead for a while, whether we can surpass it, and if we can, what the right technology to do that is. All of which I was trying to address in this video, and it, you know, got a lot of people interested and involved in talking about it. You know, the more comments you get, the more it kind of boosts in the algorithm. So there were a lot of people that felt that I was wrong in my assertion, and felt that I left some things out. And that's all good, it was a good conversation. I was, I was really happy with how this video came out and how it was received. And the number one most watched video in 2017 with 434,410 views, graphene supercapacitors are about to change the world. Here's how. So of course, of course, this is my top viewed video of the year. Of course it is. Because right out of the gate with this video, I made probably the biggest factual error of any video that I did all year. I was basically trying to give a background primer about battery technology and how we kind of got to where we are now and how supercapacitors are gonna take things to the next level. And in doing so, I mentioned that nickel cadmium batteries aren't rechargeable, which is totally not true. Seriously, not a day has gone by since I put this video out that I have not gotten a comment from somebody 
correcting me on this. And just a little YouTuber venting, if I may. Once upon a time, if I made a mistake, it was really easy to correct because all I had to do was put an annotation on the screen and then people could see, oh, okay, you know, he, he sees that he corrected himself. YouTube took the annotations away though, and so now there's not really any way for me to correct <laughs> other than to make another video and then put a card up there, which not as many people look at. I tried everything I could to correct for this. I even put the very first line of the video of the description, a big all cap statement saying, yes, I know I got it wrong. I did a follow up video where I corrected myself. Uh, but again, to this very day, I get comments from people telling me how wrong I was on that. But beyond that, again, this was one of those things where I didn't know that there was a battery community per se, but there's a lot of people out there that are really into energy storage technology, and for good reason. This is this is what's going to carry us forward. Whether you're talking about things like Tesla power walls or their you know battery installations in Australia, that's a whole story that I could talk about. But storing energy and how we get that energy out into the devices that power our lives, that make our the way our way of life possible is a really important topic and there's a lot of people out there that are really super into it and have very strong opinions about it and definitely shared those opinions on this video but i am going to need to follow up on this one in some form or fashion in the next year and with any luck i won't screw up too badly so those are my top five videos of 2017 according to the views and basically according to youtube i would love to hear what you think were those some of your favorites was there a video that i did that stood out that's not on this list that you know impacted you in some way would you like to see a follow-up on any of these videos let me know in the comments but for now i'm going to wrap this up but i just want to say again thank you guys so much for all the support that you've given the channel over the last year it's gone to places that I did not think it would go, and I've got some plans for 2018 that I'm super excited about, and I hope that you are on board with them as well. So uh, let's just keep this train going, and I hope you all have a wonderful New Year's Eve and safe New Year's Eve, and I hope that 2018 brings you everything that I got out of 2017. I've got a fun video coming out on Monday, so keep an eye out for that, but in the meantime, you guys go out and have an eye-opening day, and uh, I'll see you next time. Love you guys. Take care.